Welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. 2023 has been absolutely insane from start to finish. This year was a whole lot better than last year for me. And there are quite a few things that happened that I want to talk about this year that really reflect on just how much this year changed my life. For the better, for the worse, who knows, we'll get into all that sooner or later. But the first thing I want to do before I say anything else is thank you all. Because in one year, we went from about 40 subs to a thousand. Not even a thousand, a thousand two hundred something else. More than a thousand subscribers have been gained on this freaking channel. In one year that I've been here making these terrible nerf reviews, you all have enjoyed them so much that you subscribed. A thousand of you have subscribed. More than a thousand have subscribed. And you all tune into my videos. And it makes me so happy because it actually makes me feel like there's a reason to make these videos, which is why we're standing here right now. Because if it wasn't for the amount of support and just help that I have gotten making these videos and having people want me to make the videos, I probably would have stopped a very long time ago. But I continued. We're still here. And so I just want to go over some things that I am especially grateful for throughout 2023. But first though, I think it's time I spill the beans. Yes, I know what the Strife X is. And there's a reason that I've been keeping this blaster off of my channel for so long and trying to keep the subject of it quiet. And that is because I was very conflicted about this blaster when I first saw it. I'll get into more of this in my review, but honestly, I thought that it was going to be bad and it ended up being really, really cool. But we'll get into that later again in the review. With that said, let's talk about some blasters that I'm especially happy to have. Starting with this one, the Strife X. This is a very cool blaster, and I'm very happy that I got my hands on it. For Christmas, obviously, because I mean, come on, it's after Christmas, and I haven't started talking about it until right now. But let's actually talk about some that you guys know about. First, the Double Punch. This is a blaster that came out this year, and I honestly wasn't very excited about it because I thought it was gonna be a terrible gimmicky blaster. And this ended up being one of the greatest things that Nerf ever did because it did something new and it did it competently, which is the point. It's not just because, oh, it's trying to do something new and it works okay enough, so that means it's a good blaster. This thing does not cheap out and it does what it's trying to do as good as it possibly can. Nothing was cheaped out on in here from everything I can see. The blaster is made with thick plastic, it's comfortable, it's well designed, it performs well, it shoots well, and the trigger is so satisfying. I can't get enough out of this blaster. I'm super happy that it exists, and honestly, it's one of the only things that Nerf has made to manage to do that has trumped my appreciation for the Infinis. I love the Infinis a lot, but this one is just so much better in so many different ways for so many different reasons. Next is the Limited Geller Horn, a blaster that I really wasn't expecting to actually be good. I thought this was just going to be, oh, it's an expensive, nearly impossible to get gimmicky, nonsensical blaster. But this thing is actually a super cool blaster, and I'm very, very happy I picked one up when I did, because now that they've stopped selling them off of Bungie Store, yep. They are painful to try and afford on eBay. So, um, yeah, I got this thing and I'm probably never, ever, ever, ever going to part with it unless I absolutely have to because this blaster is just so freaking cool. It is so big for no reason and it is just absolutely awesome. And I hope that anybody who wanted to get one did because if you have to try and get one secondhand on eBay, I feel very sorry for you. What about the Worker Nightingale? The first worker blaster that I actually got my hands on and a bit of getting my feet wet for the top of the line market of the nerf industry. Yeah, it's not top of the line by any stretch of the imagination because it is just a $60 blaster that you can reasonably get from Amazon or out of darts, but the blaster itself was something far more interesting than anything I had seen at the time. It is a 110 to 120 FPS flywheeler, flywheeler with a dual stage trigger, mag and grip design, and a super tight, tiny, compact package that makes the Strife look like a Mastodon by comparison. It really is a super interesting and well-designed blaster blaster, and the only reason the review for this hasn't hit the channel is because I realized I only have one mag. Hopefully that will change soon. 
But yeah, the Worker Nightingale is genuinely a really cool blaster, and I hope to do more things with it in the future. But arguably the most important blaster that I actually got this year is the Tesseract, because I didn't buy it. I made it myself, and that is a huge milestone for me to admit. I have never been able to modify a flywheel blaster because soldering is kind of a pain in the ass, and I just wasn't feeling confident enough to try it. But with a little bit of encouragement and the right tools and some time on my hands, I put together a semi-automatic flywheel blaster that I am genuinely, genuinely happy with. This blaster is very important to me. I I probably won't ever sell it, and if I do, I already know exactly who I'm going to sell it to because I know he'll take good care of it, but more on that in just a moment. This blaster is a huge step for me to take because even though it's not doing too much in like the revolutionary market because, yeah, it's just an auto strife, or it's not even an auto strife, it's just a modified strife with a very nice cosmetic shell, it is still a big deal for me because I haven't been able to do anything like this before, and this was my first attempt at trying something something like this, and it worked to great success. But there's one more thing that I really want to be thankful for before this year ends. And that doesn't just include my parents for helping me fund all of this, because my mom and my dad, I know you guys watch my videos, thank you so much for all, like, all the help that you two have given me to get this far on my channel, because you guys gave me the money to be able to do this. You helped me fund the money to be able to do this, and you've always been so supportive with my YouTube channel content and everything that I've been doing that I can't really appreciate you guys enough, especially for this Christmas. This Christmas was wild, and I just really want to thank you all for being so supportive in my hobby interests and everything like that, because honestly, I probably wouldn't be here without your guys' help. But there's another person that I really want to thank, and that is Phase One Phone. From a distance, you wouldn't even be able to tell that Phase One Foam and I are friends because we're kind of just two dinguses on the internet that every once in a while collab and make fun of each other's content. He makes fun of my videos on his live streams, and every now and then I do a live stream watching his content and poking fun at it as well, and it seems like kind of a childish rivalry between us. But genuinely, Phase One Foam is my best friend in the whole world. I don't have a friend that I think more highly of than Phase One Foam. He is such a cool person who just has had the worst circumstances and just doesn't think that much of himself. And I feel bad because he is honestly worth so, so much more than he thinks. I can't even begin to explain it on YouTube. Phase One Foam has extensively donated to my streams. He has helped me like get blasters that I haven't been able to get before, such as the Raven Stinger over there he, and this Rapid Strike over here. He has helped me build blasters before, like the Tesseract. He helped me get the parts together for that. He encouraged me to do more mods in the future. He encouraged me to save my money and look at more top of the line stuff rather than just spending it all on Nerf branded nuggets. And genuinely, he's just been such a pleasant person to be around. There's a reason I met up with him back in July and that was because I genuinely wanted to. I wanted to meet this guy for myself because he was just such a cool person on the internet. I figured he had to be cool in real life and he definitely was. Being able to meet Phase One Foam in real life was one of the best experiences I got all year. In fact, it might actually be the best experience that I got all year. Not just because I got to try out his top of the line blasters, but he's just such a, joy a joyous, pleasant person to be around. In real life, he's just so playful and excited about his blasters. Like, when he got here, he couldn't wait to open up his blasters and take them out and show them, like, his Straven or his little hammer shot pistol that he made. It's like, he so desperately wanted to show those off, and it was so fun. It was so cool to just be able to hang out with him and have a good time and shoot blasters at each other. And he would do this thing where I would be doing something completely unrelated, and he'd just, like either take one of his blasters or take one of mine and like be loading it off in the distance I didn't even know and then he'd just come in and start shooting me with it like point blank and just staring at me with this super straight face just shooting me for no reason I was like why did you do this stop shooting me for the love of all things great and small please and he's like oh, I don't know try asking me again tomorrow or something <laughs> it was so stupid but it just he has so much more personality than most people think he does and I think that that's very sad, because most of the personality that he has, he seems to unintentionally hide in his videos. And I want him to express how happy he is in his videos, because honestly, he deserves people to know how happy he actually is, and how, how, much, how much fun he's having in the Nerf hobby. 
If you haven't for some reason seen Phase 1 Foam yet, I highly recommend you go subscribe to him, or at the very least, check out some of his content. He doesn't have the best editing style in the world, he usually doesn't get that much time to edit, which, un which is understandable because he has a full-time job on top of making videos, and he can't really make videos that much anyway. I'm gonna try and edit some videos for him in the future and see how that ends up working out, but I digress. He has some of the coolest mods I've seen in a very long time. He makes videos on them. He streams games all the time. I really recommend that you check out Phase One Phone because honestly, he's just a cool dude and he deserves more subscribers than he has. Between my parents helping me out to make this channel as big as it is, Phase One Foam for giving me the love and support that I really desperately needed in my life because honestly, I just don't have any friends outside of him. And you guys for helping me get to a thousand subscribers and helping me want to continue making videos. 2023 has honestly been one of the best years I've had in a very long time. And I wanna thank everyone who watches this video because I tell you, every single person who is watching this video has helped me in some way, shape, or form, and I can't thank you all enough. I am very excited for 2024. And with all that said, thanks for watching. I am Superman.